Just before we go, uh, Professor Drum, um, you met some of the parents of children who have been attending Crumlin Children's Hospital. You met them uh, during the week when you were at the Dáil uh, addressing the uh, Committee on Health. Um, how does it how does it make you feel? Because you're a physician, you're you're a former pediatric, uh, pediatrician, and you were a consultant at Crumlin Children's Hospital, so you know well um, the situation out there. How does it make you feel when you meet these parents and they kind of see you as the enemy almost? No, I, in fact, I had a very, very, very constructive meeting with them. In fact, some of them knew of my life in Crumlin, and um, I still meet loads of people on the street and indeed around the country who were patients of mine in Crumlin because I would have been dealing with people from all over the country. And you're right, I had a hugely busy clinical practice there with kids with liver disease and with bowel disease and Crohn's disease, but I also had a massive research structure, some of which indeed continues to work and is hugely successful on the international level, and I believe um, I, mean, I would want to maintain that contact because I deeply believe in paediatrics and in childcare. But... In terms of the parents, to me, parents are central to changing the system. To me, patients in general are central, and we've put huge effort into giving patients power and bringing back message to us. The more that we do, the more we'll change. The new children's hospital has been developed, to be honest with you. It's a success in terms of its development because the new, the new Crumlin Children's Hospital group, which is a group of parents who said, we don't care where it's built, we want it done. And people like that are the people who will drive change because they have no interest except in getting proper care for the children. They don't have, as not only in paediatrics, but all over the system, all of our own baggage that we all have to deal with. Now, I believe most clinicians can move rapidly in that direction as well, because that's what they want. But let me say to you that my meeting with the parents was totally constructive, and I believe that they, in fact, can be hugely important in making sure that we do the right thing. I don't believe at all that they were critical. I believe they said, we want this to happen. Yes, but you've had uh, Jamie Mur uh, Murphy's uh, parents becoming being very, very vocal about the fact that their little daughter who needed uh, earlier surgery wasn't able to get it and to such an extent now that it's, it's, ver it's very difficult. She has to wait further until her lungs expand again. I mean, that okay. must be very frustrating when you see that happening. No, I, look, I'm, I, as I say, I can't deal with individual, I know with individual cases, cases here, but let yeah. me just say in general terms to be fair to the people in Crumlin. The people in Crumlin have absolutely assured us that nobody was left waiting for surgery. Okay? Absolutely assured us. And um, I think, to be fair to them, whatever clinical decisions they make in any situation, I would respect. I mean, I have absolutely no doubt that the orthopedic surgeons in Grumman, the intensivists, um, the whole paediatric structure there is up to the best quality in the world. I have absolutely no doubt that the decisions they make in any individual case are to be respected. And um, I have no, that's one thing I have no doubt about. One final question before we go, and thank you so much for giving me so much of your time. Um, if you had known when you went for the position of CEO uh, of, the, of the HSE, the kind of political situation where you would get yourself embroiled in, just the unbelievable political football that, that the whole health system has become here um, and the problems you would, you would incur and the lack of recognition, all the other things we've talked about. Would, would you have taken it in retrospect or would you have said, God, I'll stick, I'll stick with my position in Crumlin? No, I mean, I would have sat down um, with a copy book, um, Karen, when people first asked me about this job. And to be honest with you, you could put down all the positives of what could be achieved you could identify all the problems that were there, which I think each and every one of us, and we all have different skills. If we feel we can make a difference, then we need to make that commitment. Then you put down what are the real negatives. And I would have put it number one, the loss of my own anonymity would be number one for me. And indeed, we would have seen that, and I and my family would have seen that day one. The amount of abuse that would come with this, I think I absolutely saw coming at me, believe it or not. Um, in relation to the political issues, yes, I mean, the, the challenge of reconfiguring any system is a huge challenge. But again, to be fair to politicians, I have to say one thing. When I meet local politicians, often what they're saying to me is, look, we have to deal with the people who are worried locally. It is your job to convince the people that what you're trying to change is the right thing. So I think sometimes politicians get a... We, we're, in the medical profession, we're unduly critical of them because what they're doing is representing the fear they hear expressed locally. It is our job to try and convince people 
Uh, we often manage to convince the politicians, but they're not able to convince their local people. So the political issue is a challenge. But let's again say, and again we're back to, does the HSE work or not? The Fitzgerald reports over 40 years ago in terms of reconfiguration of hospital services. Not an iota was done in relation to it. The HSE has driven a massive reconfiguration program in general hospital services and indeed in all hospital services, but most importantly is not absolutely totally reconfiguring the primary care team structure and the primary care structure in this country. Now, if that, and I've been at this job now over three and a half years, if that isn't progress, then I think people are being very, very unfair. Now, will there always be criticism? There will. Because if you do a thousand journeys a day with a train to Cork and one of them is late, that's a very good outturn. If you do a thousand medical interventions a day and one goes wrong, that is newspaper, front line, and it should be because the outcome has such devastating effect. But you can't compare those two businesses. We have to be constantly aware of the fact that one mistake drags the whole system into disrepute. And as I say, sometimes that's very fair because it can be an enormous effect on a family. But this is a difficult business and therefore will always be subject to criticism. Okay. Professor Brendan Drum, thank you very much.